South Korea's Defense Ministry released the details of their analysis of North Korea's latest missile test last Friday. The ministry said that after looking at the missile's height, distance, speed and flight time with their U.S. counterparts, they could conclude that it was a Hwasong-12 intermediate-range rocket. They added that if flown on a normal trajectory, it could reach the U.S. military bases of Guam in the Western Pacific. History being made for the president at the United Nations. His first appearance before the world body as leader of the free world. He took part in several meetings already today. The big moment, though, comes tomorrow with his address to the General Assembly, one that will focus largely on the threats facing the world, specifically, obviously, North Korea. That's what they're focused on, those big sanctions in, uh, at the U.N. last week. Eric Sean is live at the United Nations in New York. Eric? Hello, Harris. Well, back in 2005, I interviewed then-developer Donald Trump, who wanted to renovate the U.N. building. He called this uh, establishment either corrupt or incompetent. Well, he returned today as president of the United States and is holding it to account. The president attended a meeting on U.N. reform. He also met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. But as you say, all eyes are on the speech tomorrow to the General Assembly in which he will take North Korea to task. He is expected to call on the world body to unite against the threat posed by Kim Jong-un, even though the Security Council has so far over the last 11 years passed nine resolutions they have basically failed to rein that regime in. And the administration has raised the prospect of possible military action if indeed diplomacy does eventually fail. And by the way, uh, the North Korean delegation will be in the General Assembly a few rows from the president tomorrow as he speaks. We'll have to see, though, if they take his message to heart. Through this latest test, North Korea has clearly shown that they can now hit Guam. The island is 3,500 kilometers away, but the latest Hwasong-12 has shown it can fly 200 kilometers further. North Korea needs weapons that can target Japan, Guam and the U.S. mainland to show that they are prepared for a war with not just South Korea, but with those allies as well. The Defense Ministry also warned that the regime is in the final stages of completing a fully operational intercontinental ballistic missile, one which could reach the U.S. mainland and successfully re-enter the atmosphere. Experts agree with this analysis. The only thing left is to make sure the Hwasong-14 can fly on a normal trajectory to make sure it can reach a height of over 1,500 kilometers and travel 9,000 kilometers. At the moment, we reckon the technology related to accuracy is at about where the U.S. and Russia were 30 years ago. However, with more missile tests possibly on the way, North Korea is expected to catch up quickly.